We're going back to school today and we are talking about the why, when and how of HDR high dynamic range drone photography. It's a bit of a sweary word in certain photography circles but I don't care. I think it looks cool if it's done well and it's also an excellent tool for getting around your camera's inherent dynamic range limitations. So let's get into that now. Stuart Carroll here from Drone Film Guide, the channel where we learn to fly like filmmakers. First things first, it's a pleasure for us to bring your attention to today's sponsor, Soundstripe. A lot of people ask us where we get our music from. Well, we've been using Soundstripe.com for three years. We are paying customers, so when they asked us to sponsor a few videos, it made perfect sense. We were more than happy to because we use their product. There becomes a point at which scouring the internet for free music is just a bit pointless, you've got better things to do, so paying a small monthly or annual fee for a high quality curated source of music is worth every penny. So Soundstripe.com is for us, we've created a playlist of great tracks that we think are good for editing too, we've used them in our YouTube videos so you can check that out and if you are interested in any of their products then you can secure a 10% discount by using the code in the description below. So when and why would we even bother with HDR drone photography? Right, a quick bit of terminology, dynamic range, the difference between your highlights and your shadows, it's the contrast ratio, the variation of all the greys between white and black. Certain subjects will have a dynamic range that exceeds the dynamic range of your camera. So the ability of your camera to capture all the whites and blacks in that image is exceeded, it's not possible. We're going to end up with blown out highlights or crushed shadows. Now especially for us as drone cinematographers and drone photographers, the cameras that we have on our drones, much as they're fantastic, they have limitations because they have small sensors. All cameras have limitations in terms of their ability to retain detail throughout the entire spectrum of dynamic range, but particularly so on small cameras with small sensors. So it's a very pertinent issue for us as drone photographers. So what kind of subject would have a dynamic range so high that it exceeds the ability of our drone's camera to capture it? A shot with the sun in it. That's what we're talking about here as drone photographers. Sunsets, sunrises. If you look at this photo, you have the extreme contrast of the highlights of the sun and the shadows of the ground. What do you expose for? 90% of the time I would say expose for the highlights. Underexpose the rest of the image. Go full silhouette if you have to and retain the detail and the color in the sky. Shadows are dark by definition, you don't expect to see detail in them, it's a bonus if you do. Highlights on the other hand, you want to see that detail otherwise you're left with this blown out section in the sky and it just doesn't look good. If on the other hand we want to retain not only the detail in the sky with the sun in it, but we want to see much more detail in the ground, shadows all the way through to midtones, we need a way of capturing more dynamic range. We do that by taking more than one exposure of the same photo. So we've already got our photo of the silhouetted landscape and the sky exposed correctly. Let's flip it on its head and take a shot with the ground exposed correctly and the sky blown out. We can then take those two photos, composite them together in post and work around the dynamic range limitations of our camera and that is high dynamic range photography. One thing that you really need to understand is that HDR photography is only necessary in these situations of extreme contrast, sunrise and sunset. Look at your histogram. If you see a fairly balanced exposure in the middle of that histogram, you do not need HDR. The only time you would consider it is if you have a spike at either end of your histogram and that means your camera has not retained enough detail in those shadows or highlights. Taking HDR photos of normal balanced exposures is completely pointless. It serves no purpose whatsoever because that standard JPEG or RAW photo has already retained all the detail it needs to. There's nothing to be gained from going through the process of taking multiple exposures and compositing them together. We've discussed the when and the why of HDR photography, so let's talk about the how. Before we do so, if you've made it this far in the video, you will love our new 40 page ebook from Drone Zero to Drone Hero. 37 tips to get you flying like a filmmaker. It's free, it's beautiful to look at like all of our work, it's as entertaining as it is informative. Do check that out and of course if you want to become a fantastic drone cinematographer we have an 8 hour drone cinematography masterclass. Link in the description to all of that stuff, I think you'll enjoy it all. 
At the simplest level, the DJI GO app will do all the work for you. Go into your shooting modes, pick HDR, point your camera at the sun and take a photo. The app will take multiple exposures of that same image, some underexposed, some overexposed, and then in the software, composites them all together and exports for you an HDR JPEG. It's a great starting point, and I would definitely recommend you give it a go. As time goes on, however, you might want to retain a bit more control of the capture and editing of your HDR photos. The DJI app tends to export very saturated, very contrasty, obviously, images, which aren't to everyone's taste. They can be a bit much, if I'm honest, and it's one of those things that gives HDR photography a bit of a bad name, these kind of eye-bleedingly saturated images. So the alternative is to take auto-exposure bracketed photos in RAW and then we bring those photos into Lightroom and edit them ourselves. First things first, set the app to capture raw photographs. As I'm sure you know, raw photographs retain a huge amount more detail in the shadows and the highlights. They retain all the detail that the camera has captured, unlike a JPEG which compresses the image and throws away a lot of that information. Then we're going to go into our shooting modes and select AEB and we can pick between three or five photos. Three is normally plenty. Now when you're starting out this is all very confusing. HDR, AEB, I don't understand it but because I've explained to you the mechanics of taking an HDR photo and how it works you'll understand this perfectly. Auto exposure bracketing is just simply the mechanics of taking three or five different exposures of the same thing. We then take those three or five exposures into Lightroom, composite them, and the result is an HDR photo. So in the DJI GO app, if you select HDR, you're asking the app to do it for you. If you select AEB, we are still headed in the direction of an HDR image, it's just you're going to have to take those images yourself and do something with it afterwards. So now we've selected AEB mode with three or five exposures, point the drone at the sun, take a photo, and the app does exactly the same as before. It takes multiple different exposures of the same photo, only this time we don't get the HDR photo as a result. So we've got some work to do. Let's jump into Lightroom. I've imported the five individual photos taken by the DJI GO app in AEB mode, and as you can see, they are all different exposures of the same image. Select all the photos, right click, merge, HDR, wait for the preview to come up and we're done. You can now save that photo. Now we have not only a tremendous high dynamic range photo, but it's a raw photo. So we can manipulate the exposure and the colors even further to our heart's content. It might seem like a lot of work compared with just taking an HDR photo on the app. So it depends where you are at your journey, but if you want to get into this, the rewards are quite considerable because it gets us away from that HDR look so we can use the technique subtly to get around our camera's dynamic range limitations without necessarily pushing it all the way to the more artificial end of the spectrum. Now there's nothing wrong going all the way to the other end of the spectrum, it's just by definition it is unnatural because the dynamic range captured within that kind of photo exceeds what even the human eye can see. So depending on what kind of look you're going for, that might not be appropriate. Generally speaking, for example, wedding photography is meant to feel a little bit more natural. So an unnatural HDR image might just grate a little bit. By comparison, if we're taking photos of cars or some kind of product or some kind of dramatic movie poster, it doesn't really matter. You can do whatever you want. You can go as unnatural as you want if it suits the look and the general feel that you're going for. I want to leave you with one final thought, continuing on from what I said before. Firstly, I've explained to you that you only need HDR in extreme situations of contrast, so sunsets and sunrises, essentially, where you have spikes at either end of the histogram because your camera can't retain all that detail. Now, raw photography is astonishing. The amount of detail retained in the highlights and the shadows is amazing. 90% of the time, I've achieved just as good a result editing a single raw photo with the exposure shot right down the middle. So if you need to, or for whatever reason, you can take a raw photo, which is a compromise, the worst of both worlds. You've got an overexposed sky and an underexposed ground, but you're somewhere in the middle. There will be so much detail in that raw photo that you can recover those shadows and take them all the way into midtones, and you can pull those highlights back and get some of those back into the midtones and spread out that dynamic range throughout the image and get a nice shot. Sometimes you get a better result. 
on my ground camera, Panasonic GH5 here, I took this photo of the Mavic 2 Pro with an Insta360 ONE X stuck on the top of it. And I didn't like the result. It's an HDR image, I composited it together in Lightroom. I just didn't think it looked very good. So I just took one of the raw images, the one that was right down the middle, didn't look very nice at all, and I edited that. And I got a far nicer, more natural result as well. You can see the way the sun is coming in the top left corner of the image there. I just think it looks a lot nicer. So HDR is a fantastic technique, but it's certainly not to be used all the time. It's not to be overused, and it's only to be used in specific situations. And it doesn't always even give you a better result than just taking a standard raw photo. That's my opinions on the subject. I would love to hear your thoughts. Some of you have probably been doing this a lot longer than me, a lot more experience in this as well. So please do leave your comments in the description or in the, um, under the video, I should say. Anyway, that's enough for today. Don't forget to check out that ebook from Drone Zero to Drone Hero. It's a bit of fun. I think you will like it. Our masterclass as well, obviously, if you want to get into aerial filmmaking. And we will see you next time here on Drone Film Guide.